All right, so now we're going to actually build a very simple windmill mechanism uh, similar to what you see on the Yale site. Um, and we'll talk through, we're going to be driving this with a servo. Now, as you may know, is this servo uh, can be either a continuous rotation servo or act like a regular servo. There are multiple servo uh, brackets in the first global kit. Uh, we're going to use the black one as opposed to the metal one. Metal one is useful um, in other places. Um, we'll have this servo horn um, and then two rev beams and some screws. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to put attach the servo to this servo bracket. All right. As you can see, I put the four um, hex screws um, to connect the rev servo to the bracket. Um, you can see it's there. I've also put four screws uh, along the bracket so that it can slide in with the um, into the rev module. Now, the reason I did four, not two, is it creates a little bit more bracing, just makes it a little bit stronger. So, and so we'll put the screws on. Um, onto the rev bar and the way we'll do that is we'll slide this rev through and attach it. Okay so we have this servo attached to this uh, rev beam. Uh, we're not going to tighten it because we may need to slide this up and down. Um, the next step is going to be taking this servo horn and what's nice about it is it has teeth on the inside there and those teeth snap directly onto the servo and you have a nice fit. Now one of the things that's important is you may want to screw in and make sure that the servo horn doesn't come off. You can actually put a screw into the serv into the rev module. Um, sorry, into the through the servo home right into the servo and tighten it on, and that module won't come off. What's unique about this servo horn? is that all these holes are threaded so you can screw things in. Now in the um, module that uh, Yale made um, we needed to put a bar on this so one of the ways we could do that is by simply taking this black beam and uh, sorry this black bracket and attaching that to this orange servo horn. Now we've got the servo um, and it's attached to the servo horn and there are two nuts here for us to attach a beam. Um, if you remember from the claw video, we use the servo programmer to test the limits of the servo. And so we turn it on, we hit test, and it goes to the two positions that the servo has. Right? If we hit test again, it goes to the middle position, left goes to one position, right goes to the other. Now, if you want to make the servo spin round and round continuously, that is what this switch for C is. S means it's in a servo mode, C is in a continuous mode. So I'm going to turn the servo off. Everything's off. I'm going to turn the switch to C. So it's on C. And I'm going to turn it back on again. When it comes on, all the lights flash. Before you hit test, hit program. Now program, the light should come on. I'm going to hit test again, and you can see the motion is much more than it was before, but I'm going to hit test one more time. It's now in continuous mode, so I'm going to hit test one more time, and the three buttons mean left means it turns one direction, and it's continuous in one direction. The program is to stop, and the right is continuous in the other direction. So now this servo is programmed to be able to run continuously in circles. So I have the servo mounted onto a beam here. It's programmed in continuous mode. You can imagine you get up to the robot, go into cert continuous mode, and you can spin the wheel. Another way to build the arm is to build it just like the way they describe how to make um, the windmill. So in this case, you would need a rev piece with a hole drilled through, and they've got specifications for that online. 
we'll have a shaft adapter for the servo, which is this part right here. We'll take a shaft. We need a high strength hub and a couple collar brackets. So the first thing you're going to do is take this shaft adapter, put it onto the um, put it onto the servo. We'll then take the shaft, and the shaft should fit right into this collar, like that. Okay, once you've got the shaft on the servo, we're going to take a shaft collar and we're going to put it right onto the servo. Now, this high strength shaft hub has these two little holes. We're going to put those holes into the rev and we're going to align the shaft with that hole and we're going to put that whole assembly on like this. Now, we're going to take the second shaft collar and put it on the end. Now, you want to tighten those shaft hubs with the Allen wrench. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to put the Allen wrench in and you're going to tighten it until it sits onto the, um, the axle. So I'll finish this assembly and then show you a video. So if you notice the spacing, I move the first hub collar up here, the other one out here, and so now the bar is far from the servo. So when I approach the windmill, I don't have to be very close, and I can just twist it from this far away. So now I can just come up and start my servo, and I can turn it. So this should give you a couple ideas on how to do the windmill, but it also should teach you how to change a servo from a regular servo to a continuous servo.